Good morning everybody and welcome back to Rob Motive JT. Today I'm gonna make my Jeep Gladiator roar. That's right, well hopefully. I'm gonna put in a different cold air intake um, which I've been told is louder. Now what I've got on here right now is an S&B. Uh, pretty simple, easy to do. Over here, thanks to Fernie from El Paso, Texas, who sent me this setup. It is a Volant, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but Volant Performance cold air intake for the Jeep Gladiator. According to Fernie, his wife did not like it because it made too much noise, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pull out this S&B cold air intake, and there may be a giveaway on the channel for this. If anybody is interested, let me know. Leave a comment. This is what it looks like inside the Jeep Gladiator. Does provide a nice little growl, but I'm looking for just a little bit more. Let's get this thing uninstalled. First thing we're going to do is unhook the power to the MAF sensor. Just has a little squeeze thing on the side. You want to squeeze it. You'll notice mine is marked. You can see it on camera there in green, so I know that that's the top. It should be facing up, and that's the way it should go back into the new cold air intake tubing. So just squeeze and pull. That takes that out. We'll just set that aside right over there. Next up, we're going to release the vacuum hose right over here. Again, just a squeeze and pull application. Should be able to just squeeze that sucker in. Famous last words and pull it off just like so. Just leave that lay right there. That's pretty easy. Now, we're gonna, un or we're gonna loosen the hose clamps on the tubing up here at the throttle body. That is a, what is this, a, let's see. Never can see it, eight millimeter socket. Uh, pretty standard, I think. So, we're gonna just pull that off, or loosen, I should say. Pretty easy. Now, it should break it loose, and it does. Next up, there is a bolt over here on this side um, that holds the box here steady, if you will. That should be the last piece of hardware, or fastener rather, that I need to take out. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. It's just on a bracket here on the side. Okay, got the little screw out of this side, the little bracket over here. Um, everything's loose, should be able to just pull it off right now, and my idea is to pull it off in one piece. There's no reason to take the tubing out, so should be able to pull off here, and we did. And then we should, if I recall, there's no screws or anything, be able to pull it straight out. And we did, and that was easy. Um, you can see here on the bottom, I'll show you guys, there's just two little nubs that go down into some couple of holes or grommets that are on the bottom, and that's it. That removes the cold air intake. Now, we do need to take out the uh, MAV sensor, which is right here. Now, I'm gonna mark that because I wanna keep, make sure the top part of it is where it's supposed to be so it's oriented properly in the next one. And I'm just using a silver Sharpie marker. So I'm gonna mark it right on the top here just to make sure I get it oriented properly. So just a line, pretty simple, nothing too extravagant. There, and that'll stand out so I know it needs to be pointing up just like that. So to get it out, it's pretty simple on these. It has a little arrow kind of like thing here. It just turns this way. So we'll just turn it like so. And of course the grommet wants to come out, but we should be able to just turn it and pull should be able to pull it out just like that. There you go. Again, you want to make sure you don't damage this. There's my line so I know how to get it back in there properly because the way the air flows is across the sensor element right here. So that's what you want. Looks pretty good. We didn't damage it so I'm going to set this aside so I don't damage it. And we'll go grab the other one. I've got the other one here, the Volant. This one is going to sit down in the same as the other did. The other one did, I should say sure we clear our wiring and try to hit the holes. We're not going to actually fasten it in there just yet. So we're going to leave it sit here for just a second. This one does fit in a little bit differently than the other one did as far as the bracket over here on the side. 
So we'll take a look at that. Hopefully I have that screw, we shall see. Um, and then we need to go ahead and get the tubing situated. It's gonna fit in just like this. We do have a little sleeve here that's gonna go over the throttle body and then over the edge of the uh, tubing itself. So before I do that though, I think going to go ahead and get it situated here in the actual air box get the bracket on there and then I'll tighten it down once I get it oriented so obviously just going to stick it in like so easier said than done right twist it around so we get it in there properly and then I'll adjust the size the length rather once I get it set back down in there okay I have everything seated um, the bolt over here I've been talking about right here, this is just their way of kind of securing this end of it. Um, it does not come with a bolt, so I had to find one. Fortunately, I had one. That was cool. I might actually go with a bigger washer. This one just kind of deformed as I tightened it up. Otherwise, it is plugged in in the bottom. I have the clamps on here, you can see. Ready for the vacuum hose here, and then over here where we'll plug in the MAV sensor, and then I have to tighten up the two clamps up here on the throttle body, and then we're golden. I okay, got everything on. A word of caution. Uh, when you're putting the MAV sensor back in over here, I had everything put back on. I was going to put the MAV sensor in last, and I pushed, and the little grommet here fell off inside the tubing. So I got to take it all apart so I could get the grommet outside of the tubing. The one thing I'm not sure about this is how far in the MAV sensor needs to go. I have it in as far as it will go without really getting on it, so I'm hoping that's far enough. If not, I'll be pushing it in further. We shall see. Now, next up, time to put the lid on. We're saving that MAV sensor and the vacuum line till last. Um, the lid, it is a Volant. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Volant, I don't know, performance. So, it has holes, obviously, and there's pre-threaded screw holes in there. It sits on top. The one thing I like about this, it does have this little seal around the edge. That's good. It prevents air leaks. So, you want to be careful when you put this on. I think it may be inevitable that you're going to crack the glass, but... More the plexiglass, I should say, but still, you want to just gently put this on until, until you drop your screw. Ah, fortunately, mine fell right through. That was a stroke of luck. And then, finish it up by hand. That may actually be tightened up already. Again, I don't want to crack the glass. It's already cracked a little bit, and I understand, you know, that's the way it goes. I'm not complaining, I'm just stating. Just until it's snug. You really don't want to go too far. Tap it a couple times, make sure it doesn't rattle. No rattling coming from there. So now we can put the MAV sensor and the vacuum line back in. The vacuum line is pretty simple. Uh, it just snaps right over the uh, little nub that's on here. You could hear that, I assume. And then, remember, we did mark our MAV sensor, and I marked the top. Everything's lining up, so that's good. Should. And that I couldn't actually hear, but I could feel it snap. So that's it. The whole installation is done. Now it's time to take it out for a ride. Uh, make sure I don't throw any codes because of that MAV sensor. You know, there's always something, right? We're going to start it up. You guys can experience this with me live. Here we go. Well, recorded live, you know. Okay, not seeing any codes. That's a good thing. So far, so good. Let's uh, let's go for a ride. Let's listen. I don't know. I don't think it's as loud as the S and B that I had on there before. I really don't. Let's uh, let's get out here on a straightaway. Give it a little bit of gas. Here we go. think so I don't think it's as throaty as the uh, s and B is um, just not noticing it as much 
especially just cruising. I think it, it pretty much sounds stock uh, just cruising along. So I don't know. I'm not hearing a, a big throaty. Uh, you know, I didn't expect a big throaty, but I'm not hearing really a throaty exhaust at all. Here's a comparison to the S&B. Not much from the startup. Have a listen, let me know what you think. It's the same as the other course. Now we're gonna make a turn up here, same as we did before, uh, onto a straightaway. And I'm gonna get on the gas a little bit more and have a listen. Again, this is the S and B cold air intake. Definitely uh, louder. Here we go, one more time. No, it's, it's definitely not as, it's not as throaty or as deep anyway as the uh, S&B cold air intake is. Yeah, I just don't get that that little reverberation either like I get with the S&B cold air intake. So, I don't know. I think it's a swing and a miss. So, let me turn the air back on in here. It's hot. It's only 85 degrees, but man, it's humid. Um, I think the S&B, well, I don't think, the S&B is going to be going back on. So, there will not be an S&B cold air intake giveaway, but um, you've heard what this one sounds like. And I believe Fernie told me that I could do it as a channel giveaway if I wanted. Either way, it didn't matter to him. So that's what I will be doing. Stay tuned for that. It's not going to be in this video, but it will be forthcoming. Um, giving away that Volant or Valant, I don't know how you pronounce it, cold air intake. So if you want to spruce it up underneath your hood a little bit without as much sound, I think you get something out of it, but not... Uh, not anywhere near what the S&B gives you, then you may be interested in that. Also, real quick, if you're interested, I do have two other channels, Rob Motive, all about my 2020 Toyota Tacoma. And Rob Motive Tundra, about my hunt for the new redesigned Tundra, supposed to be coming towards the end of this year. Check them out, and if you like them, the channels that is, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos like that giveaway. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.